All right, we're recording. Thank you. <clears throat> Sorry, just pulling things up here. Good morning. I am calling to order the November 9th meeting of the Governance Organization and Legislation Committee meeting at 10 a.m. Pursuant to Chapter 20 of the Acts of 2021, this meeting will be conducted via remote means. Members of the public are able to access the meeting in real time via Zoom or by telephone. And so we'll just do a quick sound check, see that everybody can be heard and can hear. And I will start with you, Anika. Good morning, I hear you. Great, hear you too. And Mandy? Um, I'm present. Okay. Um, well, we have a packed agenda and sort of sad that uh, Jennifer and Pat are unable to be here today, but we will do our best. There is one item that I received that I'm going to take up under the 48 hour, um, which is a citation that Anna wrote for Monte's March. Did I pronounce that right? Monte? Monte's March? Okay. Um, so we, depending on whether, Athena, do you know if, if Paul is planning to be here? Um, he is. I can, I can buzz him, but I think he might be making his way back from Amherst College. I, yeah, nice. I, I'm not sure he, he had left right before I did. And I only had to walk across the street. <laughs> All right. So we'll wait a few minutes. Um, we do have some meeting minutes that we can approve. Uh, and let's just do a, a quick review of the agenda. So we have some meeting minutes. We have Paul joining us for a discussion on town manager goals. This will be our second discussion. Um, Mandy has provided some input that was in the packet uh, based on our conversation at our last meeting. And we're also going to engage Paul in our further review of the public record status of CAFs. And then we have two proclamations, the 2022 Human Rights Day proclamation and the 2022 Small Business Saturday proclamation, um, and then the Montes March uh, measure as well. So a packed agenda. Um, let's, oh, somebody just texted that they're trying to log in. That's Paul. Um, okay, Paul just texted that he's trying to log in. I'll, I did send him an invitation, but I'll resend it just. Okay, great. In case he doesn't see it. Um, and if I see him in attendees, did you want um, Lynn to come in for the discussion on town manager goals? She's here. Yeah, she had offered to stay in the audience, but given we don't have, you know, too many counselors, I think it would be excellent if Lynn is willing to come in. That would be great. So while that's happening, uh, welcome, Lynn. Thank you. I'm glad to be here, but I really was intending to be silent. <laughs> Would you prefer that? So I, I don't, I don't want to put you on the spot. Would you prefer to stay in the audience? Uh, no, I'm fine. Okay. I'm just. Um, that, I'm fine. Okay. <laughs> Well, thank you for being here. Um, and let's just go ahead while we're waiting for Paul. I'm going to make a motion to approve the uh, October 26, 2022 meeting minutes. Is there a second? Second. On that? Okay, great. Any discussion? All right. Um, Anika? Uh, yes. And I'm a yes. And Mandy? Um, I. Okay, great. All right. Um, Mandy, did you want to, from your perspective, given that we have Paul here, and given that you've made some changes to the goals, um, how do you think um, we should go ahead and share and have you walk through those changes and then um we can do that paul's not here yet so i wonder if we can get rid of some of the proclamations okay yeah let's let's get let's start that that's a good idea um do you want to pull up 
the 2022 Human Rights Day proclamation is. Can, can we start with Small Business Saturday? Because I'm still working on the Human Rights Day one to check it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and there's Paul. Oh, okay. Then we'll we'll do them later. <laughs> okay. Hi, Paul. Can you hear us? Yeah, sorry, I'm late. No worries. Um, we have Jennifer and Pat are unable to join us today. And mm -hmm. so we recruited Lynn <laughs> out of the office. <laughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, okay, so all right, answering that question then, Mandy, do you how do you what do you so I'm happy to talk about a little bit of what I did. Um Great. if I can share the screen, I think it'll help. Um, but then we can go into Paul's thoughts. I and yeah, so I'll and then you you obviously get to run it, but then Paul can talk about. I assume his challenges or thoughts on how we do these goals. Um, yeah, that sounds so like a good plan. I and maybe give we should give Paul just a little bit of a because so we had one discussion, Paul, about mm -hmm. this last week, mm -hmm. and um, it was sort of a broad discussion about the structure of the goals, um, and <clears throat> we talked about possible ways of maybe splitting the goals into two to, and, and that's what Mandy's going to talk about. Um, and so we certainly, we invited you because we want to hear from you mm -hmm. and we want to share this possible direction that we might go into. Um, so if there's any comments that you would like to make just sort of initially about the goals, and then I'll hand it over to Mandy to share her, her work. Um, just my only, so the goals I think serve multiple functions. One is it's a public statement to the community about where, what the council wants to accomplish for the coming year or two years or whatever you choose. I think another is, um, you know, it's it's what we use as a basis for the development of our budget and things like that. So and that along with the budget policy guidelines are two key documents. So we, we pay attention to them. And then the third, I think part of it is just what's the ease of, Use it, utilizing it by the council. You put a lot of time into it. The council spends a lot of its corporate time, but also your individual time. So was it useful to you? What it would have been, and we've got, you know, Mandy Joe will probably talk about, we've gone back and forth between general goals versus specific goals. Like, you know, to me, like the specific goals are easy. Like, did you do this? Yes, no, checkbox. And, um, and but sometimes it's more useful to have more general goals. So, uh, I think that's, we had that discussion last year and sort of settled on this where, and so I think part of it is just what's useful to you and what, what are the products that we want that come out of this? Are we satisfied with the products that are coming out? Like the self-evaluation, the, the written product that, that you're putting together, is it, is it the right amount of time? Are you putting too much time, too little time, all that kind of stuff. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And something Andy said struck me, um, in relation to the town manager goals and um, the budget guidelines and mm -hmm. just wanting to bring that lens into our discussion as well. Mm -hmm. All right, Mandy, over to um, you. Athena can, oh, you have, let me, why, um, give me a second. So um, this is, it's the marked copy, but it's not showing the markings. Um, Paul, one of the things we talked about was potentially splitting the policy goals out from sort of your goals mm -hmm. to make it clear that they were really council policy goals. Um, one thing I did not uh, truly attempt to do in any of this document, the policy goals that I split out and then the man, sort of the new, what would just be goals for Paul, was completely update them. Um, if I thought something was totally fixed, fixed, met, um, and outdated, I tried to delete that, but I didn't try to mess with what we as a committee would potentially talk about in terms of amending things and all. Um, you know, so, um, and then for something like climate action here, I removed the, the items that would have been more related to administration and not something the council has any true control over. So I think there was one um, 
in this is why I'm showing the other one, you know, the educating the multiple member bodies on staff and staff on how to apply a climate lens. That's not really a council um, part of the council policy that was more geared towards Paul. So I eliminated things like that, but I didn't try to make too many sort of substantive policy decision changes in this draft because we hadn't talked about it. But the goal here was to pull the policy out and really be clear this is council policy. This is the council goals for whatever time frame, and then, and that that the ones you see are the ones that you Paul had as policy goals last year mm -hmm. or this year. And then I tried to change it to the performance goals of the manager, which removed all the policy ones. Again, I didn't attempt to change much in any of these other than updating the dates and all. Um, but I added one, and this is the one. This is the policy implementation goal, mm. um, mm. which which goes back then to and references the policy goals of the town council if the council were to adopt the goals. So this would sort of be the the I guess the the goal that instead of writing about all six separate goals that you did this year in a self evaluation or that we evaluated you on in six separate ways under the policy, this would be referencing all of that and saying, hey, we've adopted policy goals. Mm -hmm. We want you to effectively administer them and implement them however you see fit. Mm -hmm. um, it's probably the one if we go this direction that we as a GOL might have to talk about more extensively than others, potentially. There's some others, obviously, we have to because we'd have to get the wording right. This is one that we don't have any base wording for. But but my idea was to separate the two and say the policy goals are the council goals and your, you as CEO, you as manager have to do your side to help us meet those policy goals. Mm -hmm. And so we're going to evaluate on what you did on that, but not under each specific policy goal. So that is sort of the proposal here based on the conversation we've had. There are other changes, but like I said, we haven't as GOL talked about any specific real changes. So I tried not to put my own thoughts into that versus just deleting some that would have been outdated because they were specific enough that you've met them. Mm -hmm. So I can keep the share or I can. Let's take it down just for a minute, just to sort of pause and see just initial thoughts from Paul and or counselors on that. So it seems to take what we've what we did this year and sort of just reframe it a bit and 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 I think that it's probably I think it it gives more ownership of the goals to the council and and sort of identifying what are your goals and, and it might be those six or whatever they are, um, and then it, it's I, I think that makes a lot of sense to me the way you're framing it this way. Um, I think I think the work product would be very similar. Uh, that when I was doing a self, if I, I think about in terms of what would my work be, it'd be a self evaluation that sort of I would still need to address each one of the goals because those are the goals in item three there, whatever it was, will, will requires us like how did you do on those on our goals? So it's it wouldn't be that much different, I don't think, in terms of what I would be producing at the at goal goal reporting time. Any other thoughts, Anika or Lynn? No. Oh, Mandy. So I, I do have one about this. Um, I, I appreciate Paul saying it might not look much different from his point of view, um, from maybe a counselor point of view in evaluating you, it might look a little bit differently mm -hmm. um, because we could just talk in, in more general terms, maybe. But I wondered if we did it this way, if the long-term vision goal that has been in the management side could be, um, you know, added in or combined into this policy implementation goal. Sometimes it seemed to me that those two were in some sense, very similar. The policy is sort of a long-term vision. And then we've got this other long-term vision goal. Um, if we're looking to simplify things, that might be something we could potentially combine in. Mm -hmm. If you're going to do a rate, a checkbox or a rating system, 
you are taking away like five different categories of rating. So you will say, I think it depends how you frame it. Like with, I, you might have, instead of saying you did well on climate action, you, you did poorly on, you know, the, um, you know, poor capital projects, you, it would, I don't think you would have differentiation. I think you might want to have differentiation on that in terms of what you're feeling or a subcategory or something like that. I mean, you mean under the policy implementation? Um, okay, yeah, yeah, I was thinking along the same line with yeah. that. Yeah. Right, because there might be certain pieces that counselors will feel that w were implemented, you know, better or worse than others. Yeah. Be so, so part better. of the goal for me is that we want to institutionalize this part of the relationship, the goal setting, the policy making with the oversight of management. And so that, you know, wow. our responsibilities are clear, but this, and so, I, so again, future councils, future managers, we have a pattern. And I think we're building a really nice sort of expectation for how this relationship works in a formal, in a, this is a formal setting. So I think having this level of detail is really good um, because I, I want, you know, th this builds good management uh, and, and then and having an evaluative process every year is a, huge commitment but i think it's really important for the council because that's the manager has a large amount of power under this form of government so you want to have the council exercising its its review of that um yeah the, the only thing i can think of is that when we think about um how we rate that you know we have the four whatever the four or five categories of, of checking what, where you give your how you allocate your point system um, that one might just get one and you might say that's not, you might have to give different points. You might have to subset it out or something like that. Also, I'm curious. So with policy goals, when we're evaluating those staff evaluations don't really come into that fold, right? So Whereas with the performance goals, at least for some of them, staff evaluations. Uh, what do you mean by staff evaluations? Like, so when we're doing the evaluation uh, or going through that process, um, part of what's in our consciousness is what we've taken in from the staff evaluations, right? Uh -huh. in that process. Um, the committee evaluations, um, probably. So I'm just saying with the policy pieces, I'm just not sure that everything that's in the performance, um, like why, and maybe Mandy, you could speak to this a little bit, um, why under, why are the items under management goals under management goals as opposed to being under policy goals? Um, for example, the relationship with the U UMass Amherst College and Hampshire College. So, so that's the only one I would say that might be in the wrong spot. Um, the goal between separating those two when we first did this, um, is this like our third year doing it this way, mm -hmm. Paul? Something mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. was to say, um, there's a side where Paul is our manager. He's got under the charter, basically all of section 3.2 and 3.3, uh, all of that section three. He's the manager. He's, he's the CEO. He has to manage employees. He has to do all that. And so the management side of that document, the prior documents was, how's he doing on that side? Mm -hmm. Relationship with employees and all of that. Right. And then, And then the policy side was, in some sense, is he moving forward? Is the manager moving forward and getting the policy part done, which is somewhat different from managing employees effectively. It's not always, right? Because you have yeah. to, you know, the employees are doing most of the work for the policy, mm -hmm. I would say, you know, it's not Paul um, <laughs> doing it true. all, um, you know, and so, so it was an attempt to say, Councils the policy leaders, but how do we get those as a policy leader? How do we accomplish that stuff? That's we need the manager's help on all of that. But here are the policies we want the policy leadership we want him to focus on. Mm -hmm. 
And then, so we want specific reporting on that, but then here's the sort of management side, which we know we should be evaluating the manager on too, because that's a really important part of the job. Um, the thought process when we did this was that the management goals would probably not change much year to year mm -hmm. um, because that side of the job tends to say, stay the same. You know, are you effectively administering the finance portion? Are you effect effectively managing people? Um, and the policy goals is where the council would spend its time year to year in terms of setting stuff up. And so when you look at the management goals, administration, leadership, personnel, that really fit into the management side. Finance in general, with how we've written it, fits into the management side. The long-term vision, yes and no. Um, a community engagement is much more of a management side. Relationship with the council is a management side. And then one of the ones we added last year was this um, higher ed relationship. And that, I'm not sure we, I'm not sure we knew where to put it last year. And because it was kind of both, right? It's mm -hmm. It's sort of a policy, but it's also, a management, it's negotiating partnership agreements, it's doing, so it, it was one that was sort of a hybrid, I think. So we stuck it in management, but it might not really supposed to be there. Yeah. That's, I, that one really stands out to me that particularly with the feedback on the evaluations that yeah. perhaps that one being in a policy, in the policy might help to sort of be more, have more clarity around that, that piece. Mm -hmm. I'm also curious if the finance, um, so is there an aspect of the finance goal that relates to like allocating resources for the, toward the policy goal, like toward the policy goals, you know, I I'd like to look at that one a little bit closer to, um, in the way that it, as you said, the way that it's written, Mandy, um, I can share the screen again. Um, I looking at it on mine, but if you could, yeah, yeah, no, I, and I, I've been making some changes based on some of the things we've said, but, um, I'd, I'd like to hear from Anika and Lynn on, you know, whether we think this sort of new format, even if it doesn't save time on Paul for evaluating, even if it doesn't necessarily save time on us, if it seems more logical that it might get support before we start playing with, you know, the individual goals themselves. Please, Lynn. Um, I actually, um, I like the idea that we're identifying council goals and it'll be very interesting to see if we can um, get the council to vote to own those goals, okay? Uh, I like the fact that we're um, saying to Paul, here's the management goals, but, and this is where the rub comes for me, um, we also, you also are responsible for your side of the policy goals. I think that's what we're saying, okay? And if the, but in terms of the, I, I always translate this to the evaluation, okay? In terms of the evaluation itself, I'm not clear it's going to save even counselors a whole lot more time. And having, I'll be honest with you, as much as I um, dreaded, <laughs> still dread having to write it every year, I've kind of gotten it now in a format that it's not as difficult as I thought it was. Once I made my, forced myself to really just sit down and go at it, unfortunately, I didn't give myself enough time to really do a good proof as we all know, and I'm still struggling with that. But, you know, it, I, I like, I really like the way it's organized, but I don't think it's going to save anybody any time. So that's fine. I mean, it's, I also just, I want to go back to something Paul said. This is seriously a public statement. And, and I think making that public statement, and frankly, I think we should go back to an idea we discussed um, in the previous council, I think. And that is that maybe every six months, even when we're not doing evaluation on the sixth month in or something, 
the town manager and the council should discuss, you know, how are we feeling about these goals? Are there any changes? How are we moving? Where should we be trying to make a place bigger emphasis? So um, I, I wanna get the goals out in front of the public more often with more sense of how we're moving on them. So thank you. The other thing that I think we talked about last time to consider is, I'm sorry, Anika. Please finish. I won't forget my thoughts. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> um, is to think, you know, sometimes people are looking at two year goals to coincide with the council's terms. Um, and then, um, and, and having a check in mid year. So, so that's another thing. It's hard to do because, like, you, this council has last year's council's goals that it's working from the way we sort of set it up. So, Anika. Thank you. Um, I will say I'm, I'm still taking it in, but what I do really um, appreciate is how I think that it just kind of reminds us of just the uh, enormous landscape, you know, that is um, the re responsibilities, responsibilities that have been uh, given by council and um, that you have to manage uh, through and, and with staff. Uh, and I think that it also just... Um, what I like about this is I think that it keeps ownership as well on, on council for us to think about more often, you know, how we're participating um, and just really on the, the broad lens, because I think especially, you know, when you have, you know, pe people who are coming in new, people who have been there, you know, sometimes it's like we, we you know, we get into uh, specifics and things that people maybe are passionate about or what is going on and, and just to kind of keep the whole workings going on and, and um, making sure that everything remains centered and that we're all doing our best within supportive roles and also within maintaining um, accountability. So I, I like how it uh, seems to connect um, accountability, responsibility for all. Um, and in terms of saving time, I don't know that it does that, but I also do not see that it would add mm -hmm. add time as well. And I don't know if I'm missing something um, that I'm not considering yet. Mm -hmm. Bob, so I think w one of the things uh, that will that the council will probably talk about is there, like uh, on the affordable housing goal. I, from reading councilor comments, it seems like. We've been pushed a lot. We've been pushing a lot for affordable rental units, and I think the council saying, "Okay, we want to start focused on home ownership opportunities for you know moderate income uh, people." So, I could imagine the council saying, "We want to shift that somewhat um, to refocus that." And there be, there might be other things that you want to sort of say, "Okay, we really want you to shift over here, which is important information for us because that actually informs what the housing trust is doing and, and what we go to CPA for, what we go to CDBG for. Um, so um, knowing where we wanna put our efforts is really important because these things take multiple years. You know, when you're looking at properties, if, if the really focus is to build, you know, like we're okay with trying to build three homes, like Habitat for Humanity type homes, and we should put our efforts there instead of these larger sort of rental units that we're building. We're, and the reason we do the rental units is because that's where the state money is. You know, you can actually subsidize these things, which is how you have to do it. Um, thank you for sharing those thoughts. Uh, one, one, thought I had coming back again to the UMass goal and in having some discussion recently with Tony and Nancy and others at UMass, it seems like as an, for example, um, that goal could be in both places. It, it could be a policy goal of the council. There are actions that the council can take with our delegation and in other ways to pursue certain things um, uh, to offset the impact mm -hmm. that the university has. And then there are pieces that are clearly within your purview, like the partnership agreements, mm -hmm. I would see being in the manager goal side of mm -hmm. things. Mm -hmm. So 
I want us to sort of flex a little bit in the way that we're thinking about these things, like that one in particular, where are we as a council taking enough ownership over that particular goal, for example, where we could be doing being more proactive um, and then also keeping that awareness that there are pieces of that, like the partnership agreements that are clearly your piece. Um, so that's one thought. And then also I want, like, if there was a one line elevator speech about why we're, um, going to suggest splitting these, if that's what we decide, just what would that be, <laughs> um, to the, to our fellow counselors, mm -hmm. you know, cause if we're not saving time, um, what do we, what, do, you know, and I think we know, and we've talked about it, but I'll go to Anika and then Mandy. Yeah, so Michelle, I could just be like repeating uh, because my sound went off. So I think that I'm not sure if this is what you were including as well. Um, other overlap between like between university policy and with like, for instance, affordable housing. Um, as I know within certain uh, conversations I've had as well with Tony and just kind of in remembrance, like some of that breakdown, if you want to speak, or just it could be a disconnect or just maybe not as much engagement between that town gown relationship is, in my opinion, directly related to we have less people who are working with the university and actually living in town, um, you know, as opposed to like decades ago, you would have, you know, a, a much larger population of folks that actually worked within the university in different types of positions, um, you know, from you know, top tier down to um, maintenance workers. And so therefore like that engagement um, with the town and I would think, you know, would be, you know, was um, quite different kind of within that, you know, you would see more of that, you know, Amherst college town pride type of, um, you know, relationships um, back when. So I think that, you know, really in correlation with how, affordable housing absolutely impacts that um, relationship as well. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mandy. So um, I want to address what Michelle was saying, which is I think by splitting these out, that is our elevator pitch, what you just said about um, the council taking part or more ownership of the policy implementation. Um, you know, I think we'd have to rework how the council goals are written, um, you know, for some of it, and then maybe rework some of the policy implementation side if we wanted some of the specifics like Paul was saying. But Michelle, as you just said, part of if we take just the relationship with, say, UMass or Amherst College, it's not just all on the manager. It's not just all on his staff we as a council have to do some stuff too, but we stuck it in management and we can, you know, we almost say by doing that, well, it's not us, right? And we complained about it. <laughs> you know, but it is us, right? Um, it's also us. And so by having policy goals and they might need rewritten, you know, and then telling on the management goal side, on the town manager performance goals saying, we want you to do your part to implement these, but these are our goals, we have to do our part too. Um, you know, and so I think that's sort of the pitch is saying we need to take ownership of our own goals. We need to take ownership of the climate action goals and do our part to help that. We need to take ownership of racial equity and social justice. We need to take ownership of economic development. What are we doing from our side? We can't just rely on staff. Um, what I, I would like to know from Paul is if we do this, you were saying, Paul, say for affordable housing, that it would be helpful to know, you know, we look at the goal as written last year, um, sort of this year, that says affordable housing for low and moderate income residents. And the evaluation seemed to indicate the counselors wanted more emphasis on moderate income residents. How would you suggest rewriting either your side of these goals, if we're going to talk about there's two sides of these goals now, the council side and the, the your side, to give you that um, that direction or that desired emphasis 
you know, that's that's where these sort of numbers yeah. came from originally. But if we're going to put them as policy goals, we might not have as many numbers, right? We might not have as many things. Is there a way you would that would help you figure out where the council wants you to focus versus where the council is going to focus itself? I mean, I would have to look at the language. I mean, I think the council, the council, the, the council has sort of said we want to pro promote more home ownership opportunities. I think the council has kind of said we're done buying land, you know, that open space isn't, you know, we, we've done enough purchasing of land. That's my my perception of what councillors have said over time. Um, and um, and I think that, I think where there's a bit of a conflict is that the decision prioritizing the DEI department, the only way for me to get there was to eliminate the economic development. And that was a decision, but because it's one of these how do we afford to do everything? And it seemed like at the moment when we built the budget last year or whatever it was, um, we were prioritizing DEI, which, but then it, it meant economic development suffered because we used that position. Um, and I can imagine council saying that you made a bad call on that one. You should have done, figured out something else. But, um, you know, I think that in terms of where we're placing our priorities, because we have very, very few flexible resources, right? Um, so we're choosing things um and as, if we sort of pull back from purchasing just open space land and, and we've done enough of that and, and we, i think our en energy has been put into sort of maintaining what we have instead of building new um that will come into play i think with sidewalks that'll be a public way thing when do we want to maintain sidewalks because you have you've got people out there multiple locations saying we want new sidewalks we need sidewalks in our area and there's a you know, where do you want to put your resources? That's a pretty important decision. Um, so trying to get, trying to make this a actually valuable document that isn't just sort of big picture things, but also gives us a little bit of nuanced guidance as well is I think it's very viable. Um, or to say, check in with us on something. I'm, you know, I don't, I, I have to think a little bit more about that. That's a good question though. Yeah, Lynn. Um, a couple thoughts. Um, it would absolutely be appropriate if, as we go into this discussion, for, you know, the council, um, I don't know that we'll get it done before January, but that sometime in January or February, we do a retreat and we revisit these goals and we say, are these our goals? So that we can get them in there now and I'm sure in council meetings, there'll be some changes before we finalize them in, in December. So I'm not trying to prolong them, but on the policy goal side, we could do that. That's just one thought. A second thought, although I, I just have to say retreats are really hard to schedule and I found that out incredibly hard. Uh, the second issue, however, is by taking anything and moving it around, we continually have to respect the role of the town manager versus the policy role of the council. And I think of that with regard to the agreements with higher ed, because these are negotiated agreements and the town manager and his staff work through that negotiation. I don't want to change or I don't want to do anything that doesn't honor what the town manager's job is and what the council's job is. In addition to that, there are reasons why those aren't council discussions. One is that we're not paid full time to do it, but the other thing is that um, they have to not take place in open meeting. And that at the moment we I just want to make sure that as we move anything back or forth, we under, we keep in mind what is the manager's role and what is the council's role. That's all. Thanks. Yeah, I really want to support that, Lynn, um, because I think that especially with a council that turns over every two years and there's new counselors coming in, it's and, and even in this you know more recent situations that we're dealing with as a council, I think we it's really important that we clarify 
um, that executive role versus that legislative role and how those two bridge, you know, um, and it struck me um, in in this motion that we're looking at recently um, that, you know, using language such as to um, ask a town manager to identify resources that's like seeming seems like something we can do is to ask to identify resources versus direct the town manager to do x y or b thing um and so how do we think about that to keep it really really clear what our role is and i think that if we do that even though that's a frustrating kind of place for us all to be in sometimes i think the more clarity that we can have around that the more efficient we'll be able to be and 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 the more energy we can sort of focus on the things that we can affect change on and that paul then can you know affect change on in his role so i really agree with that yes anika uh, yes, I absolutely agree with what you just said, Michelle and Lynn before you, um, but I did forget to say something. I know I said I, I wouldn't in my last <laughs> comment. <laughs> I, I meant to ask with the conversation, and excuse me if this is in my face to read somewhere, with the conversation around putting a focus or priority around moderate housing, does that conversation include that, um, you know, it actually being a way to affect and uplift and move lower income residents into, move, move them up as, you know, we know that, um, you know, where there may be more assistance available for lower income residents that does keep people within that bracket. Um, so just how, you know, that that focus really does uplift and, you um, you know, help help lower income folks move into a situation where either they are uh, renting comfortably without restrictions, um, or you know, moving into um, eligibility for home ownership. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Paul. Yeah, so I I think um, so this conversation is happening right now with Ball Lane. Um, we're saying we want it. We're we're. Uh, you know, they purchased the land. We're saying we want we want we want you to give um, local preference, and they're saying we're not allowed to give local preference. And and their perception of Amherst is that you just don't want uh, people from Springfield to move here. Um, and what we're saying is that we're putting a lot of effort and money into this, and we think that our our residents should be have first crack at it. And they're you know, and, and I think Wayfinders started. I think they're the ones doing it. Um, you know we're sort of pressing them on having some kind of local preference, you know, all things being equal. Um, but, um, you know, they see their mission as a broader mission than just Amherst and we see, and so we're to, in conflict and that conversation is happening at the housing trust a lot that they're pushing this in some ways. Um, so um, if the goal is Amherst residents moving that way versus just anybody moving that way, those are the two different sort of value sets that we'd be, lining up against each other um we do try to i mean i think we are making a little bit of progress in terms of you know congregate homeless shelter homeless shelter in at the university motor lodge um single resident occupancy on 132 northampton road so these are all sort of you know steps to move out of homelessness into more stable environments where then 132 northampton road is going to be so important because then you have an address you have a you know, you, you can have a home where you can actually go to a job. It's hard for people to hold jobs when they don't have a home. And then they start to build equity, all those types of things. So building this sort of ladder of of um, being able to rely on a home is important. I think what people are saying now are, is um, we want people to start building equity in our town. Um, and how do we do that? And, deal, and so that's... Um, prioritizing town land for that purpose is is one way to do it you know surplus land i'm not sure if i answered your question i sort of rambling there but no 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 you're not um and and you did um mm -hmm. i was the only thing in me and i could have missed it because i don't know why my audio is acting wonky um i really do appreciate that and then just like that that other piece with how um probably where there is the least amount of support is really that middle 
um, because it is really the 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 middle who pro probably in many cases are probably in a position or could be in a position now to really uh, more immediately help to stimulate the economy and you know shop more and go out, but you know. Um, more the the middle and moderate um, income folks are really not eligible for any type of um, assistance. So I, I was just trying to connect those two pieces. Whereas, um, absolutely, you know, if there are some, if there whatever would be possible in loosening restrictions, maybe for lower income folk, but also that focus on. Um, the, the moderate income housing, because those really are, these are the folks that have the, the least amount of assistance available mm -hmm. to them. Yeah. I we mean, to afford to live here rather. Yeah. So, I mean, I think it, there are people who are, who are employed by the town who make a decent salary, but just cannot and want to live in town desperately and are renting in town now who would like to have be a homeowner and there's just not housing stock or it's, it's the prices keeps going up. Um, I think Somerville is now offering fifty thousand um, dollar grants to help with down payments, and it, it, it's the capital accumulation that presents a barrier for people for a home ownership a lot of times. And so, like, they're trying to strategize on how do we get over that hurdle because most a lot of folks have just enough money to get through, right? And they're not able to to accumulate funds, and so you know, if someone is able to accumulate some capital, maybe that's the path. I, I just saw a headline on it in Somerville. So I'm curious how they're doing that, but it's very expensive. It's like one person gets one house, but it's a person that gets a house, right? Um, so I think there's different strategies if that's what we want to do, promote home ownership opportunities. Um, but we've been really focused on just creating affordable housing. That's where the trust has been, just creating more affordable housing, which is also a high value too. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. So, and we'll delve more into the specific yeah. goals as we move forward. Um, but this has been really a great conversation. And um, I think, you know, we heard a lot from the paras the other night that, you know, many of them live outside of the community. And I knew, I know, Anika, you've talked multiple times um, about people who work in the community being able to live in the community as well. Um, and so I think that's another interesting piece about Somerville to, to sort of help stimulate that possibility. Um, and where in the policy goals, what policy goals can we implement that would drive those goals for us? Um, yeah, so specifically to that, you'd say we want to promote home ownership opportunities. That's that's our value this year or the coming years. We, you know, and that, that means we're not creating new home, new, you know, major new projects, but we're just trying to create pathways for ownership, if that's what you want to do, right? That might be a, a pathway. And you might say, you know, we want the trust to think about this, you know. Right. Right. As opposed to having all their focus being on the affordable rentals, mm -hmm. which some really great things have happened as a result mm -hmm. of that focus. Yeah. Okay. Right. I'm looking at the time here. Um, Paul, do you have another 10 minutes to talk? Absolutely. About sure. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and Mandy, Anika, Lynn, any other comments or questions for Paul on this piece? Okay. Um, Lynn, just from your perspective, how would you, so we've had two discussions on this now as a GOL. Um, and we've talked about different ways of doing this. So I think we agreed that we would come to the council with some proposal at some point, then bring it back to GOL as needed. How do you see that in terms of your schedule and agendas and things? Um, what you haven't done is any actual word changes, correct? Right. So, yeah. um, I think we could have a, we're, we're going to do agenda setting meeting today for the 21st. And I know that uh, based on some conversations that I've had with a couple different counselors, two or three things that we thought were going to be on the 21st are not going to be ready. Okay. Uh, so it is conceivable we could have that discussion on the 21st. And I would structure it in two ways. One is 
how do you feel about this rearrangement? Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm actually going to suggest three questions. How do you feel about this rearrangement? Okay, that's one. Second, while I don't want us to get into wordsmithing today, are there things that we would like to see added or subtracted into the goals? And don't try to get people wordsmithing. It's really, it's, it doesn't work well. So you're at that point, you may hear things like you've been discussing, affordable home ownership, or you, you know, you may hear somebody say, you know, we've already done that goal, take our gun done that piece of that goal, take that out. Okay. But don't do it in the room. Okay. And the third is just, you know, let's use it as a way to test the council's um, interest in owning those policy goals and whether we as a council want to have a more thorough conversation about them in January or February of 2023 at the very latest. The problem with that is that I don't, we cannot get into a prolonged debate at that point and then turn to Paul and say, oh, and by the way, here's your year long goals, but now you only have, you know, six months to achieve them. Yeah. So it's, there is a point, there is a reason why we really need to try to adopt goals. And, and each of you may have different suggestions about what the questions would be to the council, but I think we could fit in a, I wanna say timed preliminary discussion on the rearrangement and what should go in or out. And should we have a more focused discussion at some point? as a council retreat, okay? That's great, yeah, thank you, Lynn. Mandy? Yeah, um, I've been variously typing on a, the draft document for a different one as conversations have been held. And so I wanna share some of what I've done to see if this is sort of part of where we might be going, because I can take some of our conversations and move stuff around. Um, so give me a, a second as I do this and it'll show up very small to begin with, but um, I'm making it bigger. Um, I haven't started changing some of these yet, but one of the ways I, I looked at some of this with housing affordability, some thoughts on, you know, with part particular somewhere in here I put with particular emphasis on home ownership opportunities so something like that mm -hmm. um I I've talked about council prioritizing our legislative stuff um the relationship with the university I reworked to make it more council goal so the strategic partnership is not really in there right now um but then under the manager side and this is where I sort of want to get some feedback um, under this policy implementation, I was thinking maybe we could list each of those policy goals. Um, and then I have in here some suggested focal points are, and this is where the language is not set yet, but this is where maybe we could talk about um, with climate action, the CARP implementation um, or the 2025 CARP priorities or something like that, or um, for economic vitality, if the council wants looking at an economic development director, something like that could be in there or for housing affordability, increasing low and moderate income. So some of the stuff that I deleted because they were more manager focused from the policy goals could potentially be listed here. I'm not sure it makes it easier. I don't know whether we could put it in the council side, um, but what do people think about even just listing stuff here versus trying to put that focus up above and not give Paul some of those one, twos, and threes that were in there last year and leave it much more general completely. Um, yeah. Um, I see Lynn's hand. Um, Hooray for you for trying to sort through what really belongs where. Uh, and I think that's not a small task. One of the things I think the council needs to be prepared for, and given our own 
need to stress outreach is that at some point we may need to annually ask the residents of the town how they feel about our performance. We always say, well, if you don't like our performance, you know, um, don't elect us. But the reality is if we're gonna put goals out that are quote, council goals, then we need to be prepared for how we are going to receive feedback as a, as a body about those goals, not as individuals, because that is where the election, the ballot box speaks, but as a body. And so I just wanna make that observation that um, that's, that may be a next logical addition to doing the goals this way. Thanks. Thank you, Lynn. Mandy, I have a question on this. Um, so are you suggesting that we include these under the policy implementation and then move away from having those more specific itemized goals? Is that? So I'm trying to work out in my head how we could, you know, let, let me, let, let's just use housing affordability as a as a um example because i think we've talked a little bit about that one um in in more detail so um last year or this current year the 2022 goal had you know working with crc and amherst municipal affording housable housing trust to implement the comprehensive housing policy um supporting the continued operation of a seasonal shelter and ensuring the operation of a permanent seasonal shelter. That's what the current document says. Um, when you change that to a council goal, um, we, we can't really ensure the continued operation of a seasonal shelter, right? That's, that's the manager's job in some sense. We can say we want one. Um, our priority is to have one. We don't do, Paul does <laughs> the work around finding it. And so what we could do is, and this is where I'm working through my head, housing affordability, we could potentially say, we have a policy goal on housing affordability that is um, prioritizing legislative, regulatory, fiscal, and other actions that ensure safe and healthy access to safe, affordable housing for low and moderate income residents, period. We could even just stop that policy goal at period. Mm -hmm. um, and if we wanted the manager to focus on specific things, we could put it into that policy implementation side on the manager side, or we could say, you know, instead of stopping it at period, we could say affordable housing for low and moderate income residents, comma, partic with particular emphasis on home ownership opportunities, or with particular emphasis on um, moving people from homeless, you know, um, lack of shelter to having some shelter, you know, away from homelessness, say, we could put some of that in there and then not give under the management side under that policy implementation, any further guidance, mm -hmm. we could maybe have a, a um, hybrid of that where we stop and say, with particular emphasis on home ownership opportunities, say, but then move, um, the numbers that were here, the implementation of the housing policy, the operation of the seasonal shelter and the permanent shelter to the management side of those are your particular goals. I don't know whether we want to be that specific or other Paul wants us that specific versus, you know, like, I think there's three or four ways we could do this. And the question is, what would we want? Would we want to just say, we're prioritizing access to safe, affordable housing for low and moderate income residents, period, and do nothing else on either document? Or do we want to put those numbers into Paul's document as part of, you know, sort of that list that I started generating? Or do we want a hybrid where we put some of it there or get a little more specific under the council goals? Mm -hmm. Anika? Um, I agree with leaving it open, as open-ended as possible, so it comes within um, you know, so Paul has direction on that because I think that the ideas that have been coming so far are creative. And um, and I also think that, you know, when we sometimes just push home ownership opportunities, um, you know, we forget sometimes that not everyone does want to 
own a home mm-hmm. um, and or kind of have to face that, even though sometimes mortgages can be less than a rental payment. But, you know, I think that that opens the door. You know, we do have a lot of folks that come here, whether they are coming to the schools, it could be just for a certain um, amount of years and, you know, just opening up it be how, whatever ways it is affordable for low and including that moderate level income to to be here without having to give direction as to exactly how to do so. I think there are so many opportunities and town staff has shown that they're very creative and competent in, in pursuing and doing so. I'll just make one last comment on this. I was especially struck by this one um, because it seems to me like implementing the comprehensive housing policy is something that the council really should be putting a lot of emphasis on. And as far as operating a seasonal shelter and finding a permanent seasonal or year round shelter, it seems that's really on the town. That piece is really on the town manager and not, there's not a whole lot that we can do other than to support the town manager in that. Um, So the more I'm kind of looking at this, I feel like I'm going to go on record saying this. <laughs> I feel like not that the council isn't doing a tremendous amount of work. We are, but that we are sort of laying a lot on the town manager to implement these policy pieces that we could potentially be doing a lot more if the clarity was there. Um, and so I'd like to really focus on that piece as we continue this discussion. Um, yes, Mandy. As as Anika and Michelle were talking, um, something else popped into my head. If we keep it much more general, we we put that trust in the manager, right? And Paul to say he knows he, we hired him to manage, right? <laughs> Do that, but it also allows us then to focus our conversations. Potent, potentially allows the council to focus its conversations. If say again, using housing and affordability as an example, we'll prioritize legislative, regulatory, fiscal, all of that to to ensure access to safe and affordable housing for low and moderate income residents, period. If that's all we write, we could then potentially every council meeting have one or two discussions on one or two of these policy goals that say, hey, council, you've said housing affordability is your policy goal. What is our legislative goal for this council term on this one? And it's almost focused. And then we have what CRC should really be focusing on, right? As as the legislation we could potentially be drafting or for racial and social equity, what, you know, um, I'm not sure which co- committee that falls into, but what is our legislative goal? We could potentially focus it if we left these policy goals a little more broad and then had a conversation on each one of them. It might help us as a council better figure out our council role. <laughs> and the way we use our resources, right? Because <laughs> we're all bringing forward our own agendas like, wait, does that fit into any one of these policies that we have? Um, yeah, I, I agree mm. with that. Paul? <laughs> yeah, so two things. One, one, just reading this, you know, the town doesn't operate or co- put money into a seasonal shelter. That's was uh, this one is always an interesting one to me because that's a private entity if they decide to relocate to Hadley or if they went out of business, which you know could happen, we don't we don't you know we don't have resources to operate a seasonal shelter. I mean, that's not happening, but they there was a crisis there. They went through a leadership change. Um so that's always an interesting one to me. I mean, we obviously support it, but the council is explicit about saying we want resources to be supportive of us. We think a, re- a seasonal shelter in the town, because some people say get rid of it, make our lives easier. So this has been, been explicit to the by the council. I think that's so it's been an important statement, but it's sort of an interesting one in terms of a goal that, you know, it, it's like saying make sure that the, the food, you know, the, the survival center stays open. Well, that's a private nonprofit entity. So that's not our call. Um, so, um, and then, I, so as you start taking on talking about, oh, the council could do this, the council could do that. I think it's just really hard to, to I mean, I think you have two things. One is you have private initiatives or it's small group initiatives of the council that people come up with during the course of the year that they say, this is what I want to accomplish, or this is what I ran on, um, or I feel strongly about this, that 
are going to make their way through the council. And those are all pretty much owned by counselors, you know, and sort of, and you know how much work goes into these things just to develop an idea. I mean, we have one counselor who wants to have a ban on leaf blowers. Um, and so there, you know, we, we can help to a certain extent, but it's really on upon, incumbent upon the counselor to do the research, who else has done it and stuff like that. Um, and, and so to say, well, we could do more. I just, I, you know, I just look at your workload and the amount of time that people put in and making the job achievable for others. Um, I think you just have to be cognizant of how much more are we able to take on quite honestly, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it also seems that if there are personal or individual um, initiatives, or like you said, Paul, something that we've run on, um, that it seems our job should be to then try to get that into a goal of the council mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to carry out that individual initiative outside of that. Cause I really do think we're not necessarily looking enough at ourselves as a body that has goals and that those are the goals where everything should be sort of funneling through. So if there's like some totally other thing that I want to pursue, that's nowhere in the policy goals, I think it would be my job to somehow find a way to get that to being a policy goal of the full body of the council. Um, so. Yeah. I, I think, I mean, that's where I struggle a little bit, like with the, um, the solid waste thing that's coming to, is like that was never really identified as a council goal and should we be putting town staff time to support that if it's not we've got other council goals that we're supposed to be advocating for people but people bring these things forward you know um you know the, you may see the leaf blower one or um you know other things you know the um lincoln ave obviously is one that put a lot, a lot of energy went into it um so yeah. All right, lots of food for thought. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so thank you. Um, and it and we do have to get through some of these other things by the end of the period that we have today. So um, let's we'll finish up this conversation now, and then um, we're going to move right into the CAFs discussion. And Lynn, you're more than welcome to stay. Um, and you're also, please don't feel like you have to. Um, so <laughs> thank you, guys. Good for you, Lynn. <laughs> oh, no, Paul, you have to stay. I have to stay. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> you, please <laughs> stay. <laughs> okay, Lynn, do you, I'm fine. Lynn, do you want me to put you in the audience or do you, do you want to say, okay, I'll move you over? <laughs> so this is the CAFS discussion, Paul. Uh -huh. We'll try to keep it pretty, pretty okay, nope. clear. Um, so, I'm going to hand it over to Mandy to really explain what we've been talking about, but um, just generally speaking, we've been looking at the process for making CAFs um, a matter of public record, essentially, versus, um, and, and looking at them from the perspective of council committees versus town manager appointed committees. Mm -hmm. uh, and so we really wanted to get your feedback about that. So Mandy, do you want to just jump in and, and maybe give a little more specifics? So I'll, I'll try. Um, the council and you as the other appointing authority to multiple member bodies are really handling not necessarily the CAFs themselves differently at this point, but reporting on the CAFs differently. Um, the council because of some reasons we have to interview people in public, but um, we are at least through CRC are starting to be very open about things like how many applications we had, an actual number. We might not disclose names, but we're saying, you know, we had X number of CAFs submitted in the last two years of them. This many were counted as applicants, this many submitted SOIs, this many were interviewed type thing. And then these were the openings we had. Um, but beyond that, the reports are actually starting to report on current makeup of the multiple member body we're appointing to in all of the demographic areas our CAF asks for, which is um, location in town, so based on district, um, where our sort of town representation is, but also age distribution, um, 
identity as self-identified um, both in gender and in um, heritage and language distribution, um, self-identified. And um, last meeting's conversation at GOL seemed to, the, the counselors in GOL seemed to appreciate those efforts and um, thought that that potentially um, created a nice balance between privacy of applicants, um, but also transparency of applicants, applications in terms of numbers and all of that. When we look at your reports for the way you handle it, your report solely says we interviewed all applicants, mm -hmm. but we never know as a council even if there was one opening, was the applicant number one or was mm -hmm. the applicant number 10? Mm -hmm. um, um, how many applicants were there in the last two years versus how many you interviewed? Um, because at least my experience on CRC is we get 10 calves. We go back and say, hey, you need to submit an SOI or let's schedule an interview. And we get three people that say, I'll do that, right? Um, and those sometimes are m largely different numbers. And so what we wanted to talk to you about was your thoughts on moving towards a more transparent system, similar to where CRC has gone with its reports, but also GOL with its reports as it appoints finance committee members of disclosing some of those numbers instead of just a blanket statement that says we interviewed all applicants. Mm -hmm. uh, it might help the council in terms of determining just even in its um, appointment confirmation, did you really have just one applicant for one spot? You know, and mm -hmm. so even if, say, as a counselor, I look at that applicant and I go, oh, um, that's not who I would choose. But hey, there's nobody else. There's nobody else. Right. Mm -hmm. Or was this a really competitive option, mm -hmm. you know, um, a placement and, and appointment? Um, mm -hmm. And so we know we can't change your calf. That's mm -hmm. in some sense, we can only ask, right? Mm -hmm. um, but but I we were thinking it might be useful to get your feedback on whether that's something you would be willing to consider doing mm -hmm. to help promote that transparency. Because there has been a lot of, counselors have heard a lot of things from, and, and multiple counselors on this committee have heard from multiple people that they have applied for positions on multiple member bodies that you appoint and have not received an interview. Mm -hmm. um, yet the appointment memo says all applicants were interviewed. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't know what to do with that information. Yep. Anika. Do, do I... Oh, yes. Um, I support that. I was just wondering, and if I missed that, that maybe what could be included, because I think that um, I think that most of us are, are clear, even from um, just the counselors is trying to, you know, get people involved, that it is very challenging. And um, I have no doubt that when you say there's one person, that there there was one person, um, but also, you know, um, yes, there are people who say, you know, either they, um, they weren't included. So it might be helpful to note that with, you know, and without names, that mm -hmm. if that, if those are like, um, if they're like repeat or if they're already those people yeah. are uh, repeats of they've already served, they're already mm -hmm. serving on another board, that type of thing. Just so because I, I think something like this is great and also really puts um, a clear picture and puts it front and center that, you know, our job as counselors to really get out there and engage and bring others, you know, to to the table to help. And I know that we all know this, but it's just like time. It's sometimes just. Um, hard to get out there, but it could also inspire more creative ideas to really be getting out there and engaging with more members of the community. So we have a broader and more diverse pool of those who are applying. Mm -hmm. um, so, so I think first, most I mean, ninety percent, we have just enough applicants for seats. I mean, that's typically what we're, I mean, and that's why you see vacancies. You know, like for certain committees, there's just nobody there. If there's somebody we try to interview, I think there's one instance I'm aware of at this point, but if there's more, I, sh I would love to hear from, if you have instances where someone who had applied for um, water supply. So what happens a lot is people put in and they check 17 boxes, right? And then it's, I, Angela tries to manage it and figures out, okay, are we interviewing this person 17 times? And 
you know, I'm going to say no 15 times. Is that a really fair process for this individual? And also is it useful to, it's use of time for me and the people who are sitting, you know, we bring three or four people into every interview. Um, when, you know, folks don't know what they, they just want to serve, right? We, we interviewed somebody. But, so anyway, so some, and so it's just like, because you check a box, does that mean, and we try to do that. And we, she makes a list of everybody. I think there was one instance, I think very recently of someone who wanted to be on the conservation commission that didn't get into the interview mix for some reason. I'm not sure exactly why. Um, um, and so I'd love to hear if there are, if you're hearing others, please let them know because I will look into that. Um, so I think part of it is just, do we have an applicant pool? Um, some people I've interviewed, you know, they they put their names in and they're not good candidates, but they, you know, and, and the question I have is, do I keep interviewing them if I'm, no, I'm not going to appoint them, you know, they're just, they're, you know, we, we reach a consensus that this would not be a good member of a committee, period, um, you know, for whatever reason. Um, and we get people who come into town and they say, I want to serve on every committee and, um I can't feel, I can't appoint them, you know, and I, I, even if there is a vacancy, um, it's not, a, it's not a good appointment. So I won't appoint at that moment in time. Um, and, and that there's probably three or four people like that in our mix that, and then um, we just make a judgment like, yes, they've been interviewed previously. Um, sometimes we have, we interview people, um, very recently where they want to be on one committee, but I think they're going to be much better on a different committee. So um, we push them and we sort of coach them into a different, Angela does a lot of this on her own, sort of just talking through people. She, call, she calls everybody and she talks them through and saying, what would you like to do? Um, you're right though. I think in terms of when we say we interview everybody, we should, if we, if we say that. Um, in terms of numbers, you know, I've I've sometimes hinted at this in verbal in front of uh, TSO or before that OCA, like we had a lot of candidates, or you know, I didn't put it in writing because that whole thing previously with the previous council um, was kind of complicated because a lot of it was coming out of the select board use of of things, and there's this legacy stuff, and what's you know it just got complicated, and people had very strong feelings about it. Um, so, um, so one of the things that also happens is there a dynamic if if I don't appoint someone, and we and there's still seats available. Um, that it, what typically I write is that it, we had more. Uh, oftentimes I'll say, and this, if it's true, I'll say we had more applicants than we had seats. So I'm sorry we can't appoint you this time. It's you know, it's very competitive, whatever. Um, but suppose we have two seats and we have two applicants, but the group says we only want we only think one, or we're we're holding out for somebody different. You know, we need we really need a different skill set there, or you know, the the large percentage of people who are applying are um, older white people between sixty and seventy five. That's really, and we are always hoping to get something different. So. Um, the question is, is our, our appointments an entitlement almost, you know, like I applied and, and so it's, it's sort of a balancing act on some of this stuff. Um, your specific questions, can you tell me how many people applied? It's kind of a hard number. So, cause we used to have an all of the above box. We took that off of the calf because it was like, we couldn't do it. We just couldn't do it. And it's the amount of time Angela puts into lo the logistics of getting people all in the same room at the same time. It's really hard. Um, the um and it's becoming a little bit more so with some high higher profile committees um in terms of struggling to get balance and and when there's a vacancy on it and so and so holding off on filling that until we get someone that i think can bring the, the balance whether it whatever it is is sort of a judgment call on my part Thank you, Paul. Mandy? I, I appreciate all of that. Um, as we have seen um, in recent council discussions, a choice to potentially leave a seat vacant becomes very, um, it's 
it's a tough decision to make. Um, and when it's made in public versus um, a little more privately, it it becomes even tougher on not only the appointing body, but also the community. Mm -hmm. um, I think one thing that is driving this request and and the, the un unfortunately one of the GOL members who really wanted to look into this is is not here today. So mm -hmm. I'm, we're trying to channel some of her. Um, I, Michelle, you've also wanted to do this, but I know Jennifer's Jennifer's also been one that that has pushed this. So I'm I'm trying to channel some of what she says, but also listen to what you said. And I wondered one of the things that I think's been particularly frustrating and is is tough on even someone like me that on uh, that that has in the past had less support for the public nature of CAFs is we don't know even on a holistic level what the um, application pool looks like at all for mm -hmm. anything other than the committees we report uh, mm -hmm. appoint ourselves so we don't know you just told us the majority of people that fill out these CAFs for your appointments are um, over the age of 60. That's something I've never seen before, right? Because mm -hmm. we don't get those statistics. And I wonder yeah. if some of statistics like that, even if you report on them on a, you know, a quarterly basis or a, mm -hmm. you know, semi-annual basis that says, you know, we, this many people filled out CAFs and they checked, they wanted to serve on this number of committees. So, you know, you, you might've had 10 people fill out CAFs, but they yeah. checked. 300 committees you know, mm -hmm. um, type thing, um, you know, and those 10 people had this demographic range, this, that something like that might, yep. might help even if we can't do it per committee, because as, as a counselor, I'm really at, um, you know, sort of in a blind spot about how many people in town are actually applying to committees as a whole, um, what the demographics of them are mm -hmm. you know are we getting a good demographic or not and so even some is, is there a potential way to get closer to where michelle and jennifer want yeah that no, I, I, maybe I, you know that that helps yes no i think that's a really we can produce that absolutely and um i think that's a really good question and i think we have done that some time ago um, again, Angela can pull through and we can certainly show you um, the appointment, the applicants and the appointments and the comparison of the, of the demographics. I think that's, and that's, it, that informs you in terms of recruiting too. Like what, where, 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 are, where are we weak? Where are we strong? What's it look like? Of course, all of it is self-reporting. Some people, some things are blank. Um, and so, yeah, we can absolutely do that. And I think, I assume that the proper location for that would be the TSO committee to, um, you know, periodically produce that. Um, I think quarterly would be about as frequently as it doesn't change that much over time, but, you know, semi-annually or quarterly would be a reasonable expectation for that. Thank you, Paul. Nika? Uh, yes, I, I really appreciate that. I know myself, I'm a visual person, and I think that even though, again, I don't know that we would be so surprised to hear the outcome and the results of this, um, especially considering the makeup of the community and that most people who are involved, you know, tend to be retired and, you know, have a, have time um, to do so. It's, you know, hard, it's a little bit more difficult for people who are, you know, working to, um, in, in, in just in general, with volunteers across the board, anywhere, not just here. Um, but I think it will also, again, really um, shot, really direct us and put emphasis on our job to really get out there and reach the community. You know, we have, uh, because whereas we have to be so grateful, and I certainly am for all of those who are on committees, I think that it is really important in terms of creating balance, making sure that we are not just checking off boxes um, and appointing people. Um, and I just think that we would, this will allow us to truly reflect the diversity of the town in, in a better way. Um, maybe we will even be able to think of, of some way um, and in engaging the community, maybe, you know, to find out like, what are the main issues? Is it lack of interest? Do people not know? Is it the times? Um, and may allow us to move towards like, how do we 
ensure that these committees are more flexible. So we're ensuring that we're grateful, but like, you know, we, we're in a global community and we need to reflect that in my opinion. I think that's a really valuable conversation. So I, when is the next TSO meeting after? After I, tomorrow? Yeah. Oh my goodness. It's the 12th, is it me. December? It's not like I should be able to run, ramble it off my tongue to you. I think, well, two weeks <laughs> is, is Thanksgiving. I think so. we do mix miss the following Thursday. I'm sorry, my book is not in front of okay, me. Okay, I'll, I'll figure it out. Anyway, so let's, let me see. It's and, December 8th, I think. December Thank 8th. you, okay. Athena, who knows all. So, um, We'll get a report to in advance of that meeting on the demographics and and Angela might want to come and talk about that as well because yeah. she does live in this world very deeply. That would um, be great. The other thing I was thinking about as you were talking was um, when we have sort of major committee appointments that we're recruiting for, um, put that in the town manager report saying we are now really recruiting hard for conservation or whatever it is you know I, mm -hmm. I don't think we do it for every but we we do post obviously on the town bulletin board but not everybody that's a that's a charter requirement and it gets some press but it, it sort of blends in with a lot of people so if there are boards i could put that in the town manager report so counselors can start to say oh i might have to pr make it primary to you in terms of as you're starting to think because we do you are a great source of recommending people to fill out a calf you know you might be the people who are the best are the people who've been asked to apply you know you might be really, really good on this committee um it's um so i think that that's a i can start doing that too in terms of yeah. when we, when we're we sort of go through um you know, I've got a list from Angela now, like what, what's our next group that we're going to really focus on because it takes time um, to do it. So um, right now, most of our committees are at where they are, they're, they're functional. Yeah. We try to address the ones that are just, you know, don't have enough, they, they're not getting a quorum. Yeah. Um, now we're looking at the 1C, 2C things, uh, you know, yeah. vacancies and see, and then we look at, at what, who do we have applicants for these things and then okay let's move them forward if we can yeah and i'm all about the visual push and not to push and put any more on angela and brianna but i know that they're they're so you know they're great in, in capturing people but sometimes just putting some sort of visual that would visual to it which attracts like not only what we're looking for but what might apply to the interest and in, and pique the interest in others you know mm -hmm, instead mm -hmm. of just saying well we're looking for this like you know it's more like we're looking for you does this interest you you know and just ways that that grab and that could be i know and and again and I'm not meaning to put any more work on them, but I know they do like a great job with just like, you know, catchy phrases with, you know, some sort of a, you know, flyers, little snippets, something, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, that wouldn't be adding much more. And, and I, you know, and, and we have to volunteer our time. So if, if, um, so I, if I'm saying it and they like any help or input, I'm happy to, to do so, but I feel like they've got this if there's time and they, agree but just sort of you know something that within you know five ten seconds very small that just cap might capture someone's interest to mm -hmm. look into it even further and stimulate mm -hmm. their you know so so one thing that's also different you know the residence advisory committee has changed um you know we lost keisha um and, and connie used to do a whole bunch of them as well um and so we, but we have now two really strong people, Anastasia and um, Meg Gage. Jim Pistrang does a lot of them because he works remotely and he's available and he's really diligent about participating. Um, Anastasia participated in her first set of um, interviews, which was good. Um, and the way we do that is we just, and Angela says, we're, we're interviewing for these on this date, who's available. And then they, whoever wants to take it on, takes it on. They divide it up themselves and then they meet probably two or three times a year. And they sort of go through who interviewed who and who's care. You know, there's not it's not a big commitment on the on the residence advisory committee, but we try to have one of them at every every interview because that's really useful in terms because they get to see the overview as well. Um, so, Mandy, before I go to you, I just if I could just make one comment here on this. Um, so, Paul, do we have any? Um, role as counselors in sort of guiding um, the 
qualification criteria that you're using? Um, like I know, so a, a town appointed, town manager appointed committee, where does the charge come from? for from the, does the town council create that charge and put the composition in or does the town manager create it can come from different look different areas it can be in the bylaw some some committees are created by bylaw some of them have had charges from whenever they were in it started um town manager is is the it depends who who the, who the reporting agency is so um yeah but some some a lot of them are regulated by state law in fact like the historic district commission is regulated by state law you have to have certain seats filled that's the most complicated one probably of all yeah because it seems that composition is one way to sort of acknowledge and identify transparently what we're looking for in terms of a makeup of a committee but outside of that um is the council at all is it within the council's purview at all to um look at what qual what you're using as qualifying criteria um well, give, a, give an example i'm not sure i'm understanding yeah like when you were speaking earlier you said um that this person just you feel like isn't a good match for a committee for example or just wouldn't uh or might be better off in another committee or mm -hmm. Um, and you said there were certain people that sort of apply regularly, but that you just don't feel they are, should be appointed to something. Mm -hmm. um, and I, my heart broke a little bit when you said that, and mm -hmm. I'm just trying to kind of sit with that and, and understand the full context of what we're talking about here. Like, cause these are volunteer positions and, um, and we struggle so much with engaging our community. So mm -hmm. I'm just trying to understand, like, when you say um, this person is in a good match, what criteria are you using mm -hmm. to determine that? So this is a public meeting, so uh, I went, I'm not talking about any individual, but there are some people who apply who are, have mental illness, in my mind, in my opinion. I'm not a doctor or anything like that, and it's really hard um, in that's a fair unfair thing to say should i have said that um so it's it there's not everyone is 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 in a position to serve on a committee i'll put it that way and um I, so, I just put you on the spot. Why don't we? Yeah. Why don't you just sit with that question, and we can yeah. talk about it at another. Yeah, meeting. I can give you. I can give you specific examples. I will do that in a public meeting, though, and give. I, I can give you a very ex explicit examples, and that's. I'm only thinking like one or two people, quite honestly. Okay. All right, Mandy. Yeah. Um. One other thing, I as I was thinking about this, that might help the council and and even um not not just in terms of getting a diverse pool of applicants or finding where we might need to reach out more I, I i you know in terms of i'd be interested to know if there's like a, a most of the applicants come from x district right mm -hmm. um you know and so y district needs to talk more say or we need to focus on that but but i was thinking when you say we don't always have applicants for certain committees it might be good to hear and see in a visual which committees um, those that fill out CAFs check the most and which mm -hmm. they don't check. Mm -hmm. um, not just for do we need to recruit for those committees, but also for later, is this a committee? Can we restructure the committee or can we move its duties into some other committee? You know, we've always been said that this town has so many committees. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, maybe that's, you know, like, if we're having problems with a specific committee that is a town committee that isn't regulated by state law, you know, I know we can't get rid of our local cultural council, for example. If we did, we wouldn't be able to give out money. We wouldn't mm -hmm. want to do that. So if we have problems recruiting for it, we want to recruit for it. We don't want to dissolve it. Mm -hmm. um, but if there's another committee, say, I, we used to have a solid waste committee, I think. I don't think we do now mm -hmm. um, that we had tr trouble with. But hey, we could move those duties into another committee that only meets once every other month. But now we've just consolidated to without losing the duties. And maybe 
it becomes a more interesting to committee to be on, that might be helpful and help us review some of that to see what we could do to hopefully help out everyone's goal of filling all of these committees um, with the best volunteers we can find. Yeah, no, that's something we can put in the report as well. That's in, in the database. So she should be able to pull that out. All right. Um, Paul, thank you so much. I just, Lynn is still in the audience. I'm going to call a period of public comment quickly. Um, Lynn, if you would like to make a public comment on this, um, go ahead and raise your hand. Okay. So Paul, thank you. Thank you so much. We probably kept you here longer. Than no, this is good. It's good. And, um, really, really appreciate your time. And, and if so there's just, anything else, yeah. Just to so I make sure I have my notes right. So what I for next TSO committee meeting, do a report on the sort of applicant pools, uh, appointments, whatever demographics we can pull together, um, and that's expected to be the the eighth. Um, and and that would include we don't collect the information in terms of um, districts. Um, you know, um, I don't we don't sort that way, and we have street addresses, but beyond that, we don't. And mm -hmm. um, we do put the addresses on the appointments. I do that purposely. So you see, A, see that they're residents and B, see where they're from. People can sort of, sort of look at that anecdotally just from the appointments. That's actual factual information, but I don't sort it by district. So I've actually sort of militated against that because I don't think that's how I want to look at the town in terms of districts because it becomes too much like a city, like I'll pave your your. Mm -hmm. This happened in Somerville. You know, all the sidewalks in this one ward got got paved because the the, the loyal alderman was the councilor was um, in a tough race. So the mayor, threw, you know, <laughs> paved all the sidewalks, and suddenly that guy got elected. So it's just like, yeah, let's not let's look at it holistically. You know. Yeah, that that sounds great, and and thank you, and I as much. Uh, details you have time and can do you know mm -hmm. I understand that these are volunteers but it's like a hiring process and there is certain information that you cannot share mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um so I understand that but I think just as broad a picture that we can get would be so helpful and the uh, and I'll just before Mandy Jo speaks you know I'll think about how to put in so what you were also asking for is is there a way to tell us you had a lot of applicants or you had you only had one applicant that's sort of helpful to us because it helps us gauge our role in terms of appointing um you know that question was always asked by a previous counselor um uh and i i always i i tended to not give clear you know explicit answers ex other than we had more than we could get, or we're so happy so this number applied i had always had some different way of answering that but um we think of if, if there's any benefits or detriments to doing it one way or the other so yeah and if there was like i, I think also that if there was um a way because you you mentioned and without the reasons or anything personal about the person um the people who are kind of repeating on multiple committees mm -hmm. or just you know continuously i mean the, the reason isn't important yeah no we get people new to town who just are, are just amped up want to do, do something and they don't yeah. know what to do and it's great and we you know angela spends a lot of time talking to them like what about this what about that um and they say well i'll do i'll talk, i'll interview it for everything and it's like okay um uh that's we do a lot of duplicate interviews for folks but also if there is somebody who didn't get interviewed and put in and we did an appointment i would really like to know that because that, that's something i would follow up on mm -hmm. so i just wanted to talk about that um the district thing mm -hmm. we've started reporting on it in crc because um both our committees that we appoint or we make recommendations for planning board and cba the chairs have indicated that it's helpful to have um a diversity of where people live in town because their perspective changes at least on the, what they're doing for those committees mm -hmm. um i agree so i take the addresses provided and translate them into districts mm -hmm. um and so one thing i've thought about is if we're going to continue that is could we put a district checking you know voting precinct check on the 
calves, and I haven't broached this with GOL, but it might be useful for my reporting so I don't have to translate their addresses into districts. With our new district makeup, it may not make much of a difference because most of the districts have both a downtown component and an outer component. And mm -hmm. so it's not our prior district ones were a little more, you know, um, what district you were better indicated whether you lived downtown or not mm -hmm. um, than it does now. But it's it's something to think about, especially for certain committees that might benefit from that type of diversity of where you live. And mm -hmm. some may benefit from that more than others. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Paul. Great. Have thank you. Awesome day. Yep. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. So um, Mandy, I know you had uh, talked about bringing up Small Business Saturday. Here's the thing. Small Business Saturday doesn't need to be done today. Um, so if we could do uh, human rights and then the Montes, that would be fantastic. I'm ready for all three. So okay. all right. <laughs> awesome. Um, I do need to just quickly pull up human rights sponsors so that I make sure I have everything. Um, hang on one second, please. Um, so you have Mandy, me, you, okay. And there was, I think, all right. <laughs> I said, Mandy, me, you, um, <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. Lynn sent this. Let me. Doo -doo -doo. <clears throat> All right. So I have. Yeah. <clears throat> That's all I have, um, other than you have the Human Rights Commission, obviously, on there, right? I can't see the screen right now. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, great. So is this, and this is a proclamation that has, this is its second iteration, or it's has, has had multiple iterations. So yeah, this is, um, the, the one thing I hadn't checked that I've now checked is what it looked like compared to last year's. Um, and so all the changes you see um, would match 2022 with 2021's. Um, so later on, you'll see the big difference, but the ands needed added for some reason. I'm not sure why they didn't go through. Um, the bigger changes in 2021, um, GOL removed and then the council adopted it with its removal, these last two sentences of the last whereas. Um, and so I've put that in there for now. Um, I, so I'm, that showed up again is what you're saying. Well, that. so it was not on what, what Lynn sent forward to the council, but in 2021, it did actually get removed in GOL, and since it was adopted on consent, it would have been removed from the adopted proclamation in 2021. Um, I think the reason for that removal was it seemed odd in a whereas clause versus mm -hmm. the now therefores. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You know, I, I should actually check the now therefore. I didn't check the now therefore. Um, Oh yeah, so so the now therefore was different too. So the 2021 now therefore was this one. Oh, I see, yeah. So we kind of moved those two sentences down to the now therefore last year. Um, the every opportunity to reflect and embody um, And so, but when you, but this one didn't have that in there. Is the one that was forwarded to the council this year did not. So oh, I would, gosh. I would support yeah. going to last year's now, therefore, which would delete this paragraph. Yeah. I support that too. Um, great. Oh, um, Athena's got her hand raised. So. Athena. Maybe I'm wrong. It's the changes I saw. No, I'm just noticing that it says the 15th of November. Our council meeting is the... We have the special meeting on the 14th and the regular meeting on the 21st. 
Yeah. Uh, and 21st instead of 21st. <laughs> Are, are there any other, um, I, I'm not sure that we really need to go through it uh, paragraph by paragraph necessarily. Mandy, it sounds like you already went through it. Anika, do you have any comments? No. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. so, so I'll make the motion to declare the Human Rights Day Proclamation 2022 clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. And I second that. And then we can vote. Um, Anika? Aye. Okay. Mandy? Aye. And I'm an aye. All right. Great. So... Which one do you want next? Maybe we will be able to get through all three of these. Um, let's do Monty's March... And I need to look on that and make sure. So that got sent. And I don't think that Anna is here. She thought she might be, but let me just check. No, I do not see her. So um, Anna sent that and it has to be done as soon as possible because of the date of Monty's March. And so I don't... Did any, do you remember seeing if Lynn sent it out to everybody for a formal? Uh, I thought she did. Okay, let me just check then. Um, it looks like Jennifer Taub would like to be added to this. Um, Lynn would like to be added to this. Andy would like to be added. And that's what I have. So I will go in and or have Athena add the header, but. Okay. The only things I saw were the Oxford comma and some extra spaces, I think. So Anna far. Said, Anna says she loves an Oxford comma, but, <laughs> but she always leaves them out. Oh, that and then one and down here. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And then I obviously put in the signature block, but I'll correct this for Athena to the 21st. And is this, can you scroll up when you have a, a moment? Um, is this, how does a citation different, different, how does it differ from that of a proclamation? So a proclamation pro generally proclaims a day or a um you know something milestone. x day or miles you know whereas a citation honors a certain event or a certain person or a certain organization so this is basically honoring monty and the march he does but not really proclaiming a specific day monty's march day say um, or okay. anything like that okay um that's next year no i'm sure <laughs> <laughs> um okay and so this i'm without on here i wouldn't make any substantive changes but it's not it's in honor of monty's march not monty and not monte belmonte and Monty's march well if you read the now therefore we're citing the achievements of Monte oh. Belmonte um, and the food bank um, for all of the work they've done, including the Monte's March. So we could look at the title because um, it's really in honor of him. Um, or we could change the now therefore to also honor the March. I think it's fine either way. We don't do many citations, which is why it's so strange. <laughs> yeah. It is. Yeah. Uh, the one thing I wondered, though, that might help the citation, and this is where someone who's done this might know, how long has Monte been doing this? Mm, like where we could potentially put in. Let me see. Maybe we can find you know, that he's done it for so many years. Um, let me see if I can do a quick. Um, it's on the food bank website here. Um, 
43 mile march um it huh. says it says monty's march 13 so i think it's the 13th okay is that where is that monty's march 13 is that in where is that athena it's on the it's on the page where you'd register it's called oh, oh you're it's on the called <laughs> monty's march 13 yeah okay yeah that then that seems to make sense thank you I think that works in putting it there. That's great. And Athena is is if we vote this the twenty first, we're voting it in time. Yes, I checked that. I okay. believe we are, but let's double check. Um, that's why I knew this. So it's Monday. It's the t literally the twenty first and twenty second. I think. Um, yeah, that's that's right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so that's I think why we had to take it up so quickly. Um, okay. So this looks good to me. Um, I can make a motion if there aren't any other questions or comments. Okay, I move to uh, to declare the citation in honor of Monte's March for the Food Bank clear, consistent, and actionable. So I'll second. Okay, great. Um, and Anika. I. Mandy. Aye. I'm an I. Okay. Um, let's get this other last one done if we can then. <laughs> that, that will be great. This one's the easiest from my review. So that's why I suggested starting with it. Yeah. And let me, who do you have on there as a sponsor? For Just Lynn. Yeah. Lynn's hot with the sponsorships. Today. <laughs> that's what happens when you're president. You just sponsor them all to get them through. Yeah. Um, let me just make sure I don't have anyone else. Um, no. Anyone else here want to? I know that's an unfair. Well, everyone's been asked. So, but is there a particular thing that people are going to show up at for this one? Or is it? It's that day, right? For Small Business Saturday, but there's no particular event. Well, so, so there's a couple things in the whereas. Is. So the only changes I am requesting be made, there was a Scrivener a hanging and on the last whereas. Um, but when you read the now, you know, that last whereas talks about December 1st, um, something on that the mary maple lighting on the second december's third and this one says small business saturday december th you know um a, a merry day on december third um small business saturday is the 26th though i believe um but they must be doing a separate thing on the third um sip and stroll on the 15 so it talks a lot about activities they're doing. And so I wanted to to add that into the now therefore, instead of just the 26th small business Saturday um, on that day, but also during all of those celebrations written above, sort of include that into the now therefore. Yeah, absolutely. Anika? Oh, I was just saying, I'm happy to add as a small business person. However, I did not do the work. So I don't just want to slap my name on something. So this is not changed from the year before's and the year other than that last paragraph that talks more about what their bid's doing. The rest of it's the same that we've been doing for years now. Okay. That would be great. Um, the other thing I was going to say is so this is in support of small, oh, and Merry Days. Oh, good. Okay. So it does say and Merry Days because I was going to say there's like all of these awesome activities. <laughs> um, is the Merry Maple lighting that is still occurring? I knew there was talk about the Merry Maple, something with the Merry Maple. It's it's still set for the second. It is. Okay. 
Great. Which is why I wanted to put it into the now, therefore those merry days stuff. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. That covers it. All right. Anika, you want to make the motion? No. Okay. <laughs> she can second. second. I'll make it. All right. <laughs> Go for it. Um, um, move to declare the proclamation in support of Small Business Saturday and Merry Days clear, consistent, and actionable as amended. Second. Great. All right. I'm an eye on this one. Mandy? Aye. Anika? Aye. Awesome. Okay. Did I, I don't think in the last motion that I made, I said as amended, by the way. Um, so I don't know if that matters, but because we did amend it, right? Yes, we did. Okay. Athena, I don't know if, if that, does that, can you make I, I just put that in for you. <laughs> I knew that's what you meant. <laughs> yes. That's what I meant. All right. Great. Um, so just a quick review of upcoming items. Um, it sounds like the water sewer, I, I, so we still don't have a legal opinion on that one. Right. And so that's not on your agenda, Anika for tomorrow at TSO, as I understand. No. It. Okay. And given that TSO doesn't meet again until December, it will not be on our agenda. There'd be no way for it to be on the 23rd for us mm -hmm. is everybody the 23rd. Yes. Mandy. I've got a lot of stuff for your next agenda. Okay. <laughs> is the 23rd, that was on our meeting calendar, right? The 23rd is on our meeting. Cause just with, is that right before Thanksgiving? Not that, I mean, it's the day before, but I just wanted to check to make sure. Um, I had the 30th. I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Anika, I think we do have the water and sewer bylaws on the agenda for Thursday at TSO because we were hoping to have um, input from Amy and Guilford and uh, the town attorney. I think I think I was expecting that Monday. But okay, you know, you know what you you are um, you are absolutely right. I'm looking at it. I just um, I had thought that we were that that was that that last minute that was not there because it yeah you're right. It's there now. If if it ends up that we don't have it ready, then obviously it won't get to. No, no, no. You're you're absolutely right. I'm. I was looking at um, the last communication, even though I did respond to you about this. So yes. Okay, and um, Mandy is correct. I'm glad we checked this. So our next meeting is actually not until the thirtieth. Um, so go ahead with your agenda items, Mandy. I'll have the water sewer and then. Go ahead. So all of the flood map, well, the flood map zoning bylaws, um, the other two that CRC passed on flood maps don't come to GOL, but there's two zoning. Well, there's a lot of zoning bylaws, but the zoning bylaws need to be on the agenda. Um, similarly, I expect food and drink establishments to be finished by then. Um, the goal is to have them on the council's uh, December 5th agenda. So um, both planning board and CRC are working to get them recommended out in time for the 30th GOL meeting. Um, our hearings are the 18th and 19th next week again. So, and, and both of them really do need to be on the December 5th agenda. So they need to be on this GOL agenda. They've all had any, basically anything coming out of CRC related to zoning has already had legal review mm -hmm. <laughs> because that's, that's how it, it, it's what you do in zoning in some sense with all these hearings. So. Absolutely. Okay. All right. And then um, but based on, I'll look to see if there are any other proclamations that should be, that would be coming through. Um, and then we'll, we have the continuation of the town. Well, actually, so what did we decide? The town manager goals mm -hmm. have a preliminary on the 21st, which may mean that we'll then on the 30th be able to take that up again. Um, and we'll come back. I'd like us to try to, before we focus on the other issues, come back to the CAFs and make a recommendation on that. So we'll do, 
for the goals, do you want me to send, I can attempt to draft, you know, as, as you saw, I was doing some modifications. I can send some based on our discussions that don't really, I, that would basically simplify all of those policy goals to that simplified sort of sentence that, that we talked about for each of them. Um, do you want that draft in time for the G, um, the council meeting or would you like GOL to see that first? Um, I was thinking that we would start with the framework that Lynn gave us to ask those three questions. Um, and I was going to maybe write like a memo or a report that would be directed to the council. Um, but what those three, just to review what Lynn had suggested, it was um, the re so the reframing or rearrangement um, and then adding or subtracting language, which was a little bit, I'll check in with her again on that. And then whether we want to take up the policy goals in more um, comprehensively. So I, I guess you could, I mean, we didn't really talk about that too much as a GOL. So let me try to do something and then you as chair can decide which one you might want to, because I think seeing an example would be good for the council. So you could if I try something, you can decide the one that was in today's packet or the one I've tried to do based on the discussion. How about Perfect. that? That sounds great. Thank you. That would be excellent. All right. All right. Anything else? Okay. Well, thank you. This was a great meeting with just the three of us. <laughs> um, and I'm going to adjourn at 12.01 PM. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.